If you're new here, hi, I'm Jake Bartlett and I've been teaching motion designers how to use After Effects for over a decade. I want you to benefit from my years of experience, develop good workflow habits and become an After Effects genius. These aren't your average tutorials. They're a series of lessons specifically designed to teach you valuable knowledge that most people don't learn on their own and take your motion design projects to the next level. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of the lessons and get ready to take some notes. When you see extremely smooth motion in an animation like this one with the circle spinning around, I hope your first thought isn't, I need to know what script made that or what plugin do I need to create this type of motion because you don't need plugins or scripts. You need to know how to get into the graph editor and make buttery smooth motion yourself. And I'm gonna teach you how to do that yourself right now so that you can become an After Effects genius. And if you wanna try this out yourself, you can download the project files in the description. So I've got a circle right here, and what we're going to do is just have it start at the base of this canvas. I'll set a position keyframe. I've already separated the X and Y position, but I'll set a Y position keyframe there at the start of the comp, and then I'll move up to the top of the comp, maybe a second forward in time. And obviously the easiest way to make something smooth is easy ease. So you press F9 on the keyboard, and you get easy ease keyframes. That's level one, tier one easing, total noob. You need to move right past that. It's a great starting place for just giving you those eased keyframes, but you need to get in the graph editor. Before we do that, let's just make a duplicate of this. I'm actually gonna go into the essential properties because I've set this pre-comp up with some handy controls for the size of the circle. So I'm just gonna make this, let's say 150 and move it off to the left. And then I'm gonna duplicate this circle and move it to the right. And that way I can have a different color circle with my essential properties without having to make a new pre-comp. If you're not already using essential properties, you absolutely should be. I'm even gonna give this a little bit more contrast, turn the brightness down a little bit and offset the texture so that I have a unique looking circle using the same textured image, two instances of the same pre-comp. Now I'm gonna press U to bring up all the keyframes. I don't need this one that it added when I moved it left and right. So I'm just gonna delete those make sure these are still set to easy ease. And let's select the keyframes for the second circle and go into the graph editor. So the second tier, the second level of smooth easing in After Effects is to get in here and manipulate this curve right here. We're currently looking at the value graph. If yours isn't displaying the value graph, just come to this menu right here and choose value graph. But what I wanna do is increase the influence using these handles while holding shift so it doesn't move around like this to just ease that out even further in that direction as well as this direction. So we're easing out of the first keyframe and strongly easing into the second keyframe. And if I play these back side by side, that our red circle has a much stronger ease, much smoother motion. That's looking really great, but we can push this even farther. But before we do, if you truly want to become an After Effects genius, then come join Launch Into After Effects. It's the most comprehensive self-paced intro to After Effects ever created with over 20 hours hours of training for more than a decade's worth of teaching experience. By the end of the course, you'll have 10 unique motion design projects to show off and a wealth of knowledge to boost your motion design career. Head to jakeinmotion.com to learn more and sign up now. Now let's take a look at this third technique. Let's move this circle over to the left a little bit make a little bit more room and duplicate that one. I'll move that one back over to the right and we'll change the essential properties again. Let's get into there, change the color to be a green color and I'll take off that brightness and contrast adjustment and maybe take out a little bit of saturation there. And again, shift that texture around so we have a unique frame for that circle. And I'll press U to bring up all of the keyframes. We'll jump out of the graph editor and now implement a more advanced technique for increasing the easing control of this green circle. So what I wanna do is add a slider control to this layer. And I'm gonna use FX console from videocopilot.net. You can click the card above to go download this. Now it's free. It will change your life and how you add effects and presets to anything in After Effects. But I'm gonna search for slider control, which is just an empty value. Doesn't do anything on its own. I need to tie expressions to it if I want it to be used useful at all. So I'm going to rename this Y position offset, and I'm going to double click on that slider value so it shows up down here. And then I'm gonna add an expression to my Y position on this green circle by Alt or Option clicking on the stopwatch. And I'm going to just type in a very simple expression right here. I'm going to say value, meaning whatever the value of this property already is, plus, and then I'm going to use my expression pick whip to grab that slider. So we're basically just adding this slider's value to that Y position. 
Now, if I apply that, click off, it's still going to give us the exact same animation because we're not changing that value at all yet. It's still just set to zero. But as soon as I increase this value, it's going to add to that position value. And in After Effects, upwards is negative. I wanna reverse that. So I'm just gonna edit my expression one more time and just change that plus to a minus. That way, when I increase this value, it's going to just move it further up in my comp, which just makes more sense in my brain. So what I wanna do is go to the second position keyframe and add a keyframe on the Y position offset slider. So now we have a value of zero at that same point in time. And then I'll come back to right about here and let's back this up maybe just a value of 100, which in this case translates one to one to 100 pixels on the Y axis. Now that is going to back my circle off further than it should be. So I'm gonna to go to the Y position values first keyframe and I'm just going to subtract 100 from that value. So minus 100, press enter and it's back where it started. But now I have a second layer of control for that Y position value that I can also ease and combine with this Y position easing that I've already set up. So let's jump back into our graph editor and what I need to do is click on this little button right here, show post expression graph, which is going to show us the graph after the expressions have been calculated, which is what is adding this slider value to that Y position value. So now we have the original graph right here and the new graph after the expressions have been edited. And if I zoom in here a little bit and I ease this handle right here, this is the slider value. I'm holding Alt or Option and Shift to click and drag that out to the left. You can see how that is modifying the easing of our Y position. And it's giving us something that we couldn't get with just two keyframes on their own and manipulate manipulating these handles right here. If I play around with the timing of this slider, you can see that it's going to make a big difference in how that easing plays out. Obviously, I don't want to have this kind of dip or divot. I'm fixing a divot any kind of creases. We want our value graph and speed graph curves to be smooth if the goal is to get smooth motion. So I'm gonna hold Alt and just click on that to get rid of the handle and move this around. Generally, I want this keyframe to line up with about the fastest moving point in my curve, which is right about there. And I might even modify this a little bit so it's a little more eased on the back end, not so much on the front end. And then just retime this until it produces a nice smooth curve. And again, you can play with this easing until you get the motion that you're after. So let's just see what this looks like. I'll jump out of the graph editor to show you that the timing for the start and end of all three of these circles is exactly the same. But if I play it back, that green circle has a much quicker lead time into that motion and it eases into its resting spot much more quickly. But let's say that you didn't wanna get that complicated and add the slider and the expressions, even though that is generally speaking, a very simple expression. You don't always have to go to all the trouble of that just to get the curve that you want. If we, again, jump into our graph editor and make sure that we can see that Y position value and then go back to circle two, which is going to be this curve right here, I can get pretty close to that curve just by modifying these couple of handles. And those red and green circles are now moving much more closely together. But if I were to do something a little bit more extreme, like pull this slider handle out further and maybe decrease this value Value while increasing the slider value, this could produce a curve that would be much more difficult to replicate with just two keyframes. So let's jump back to that second circle again, grab the keyframes for it, and see if we can match this. It's really a lot more difficult and not something that we can really pull off with just two keyframes, but it's as simple as adding a third keyframe. So let me just pull this influence back a little bit and then hold control and click right there to add a keyframe. And now I'm just sculpting the curve to produce the motion that I need it to have. And I'm matching this curve much more closely without any expressions, no expression controllers. We have two circles now moving almost identically with two different techniques. 99% of the time, this is how I work. I don't need to take that extra step of adding a secondary level of control, but I do think it's worth knowing about for those certain scenarios where you just can't pull it off with the keyframes that you have access to. And those same techniques can be applied to any type of keyframe in After Effects, not just position, but rotation, scale, whatever property you need to animate to produce buttery smooth motion. And in some cases, you don't even need extra levels of control. This pendulum swinging around was done by just getting into the graph editor and manipulating that motion curve to create that smooth motion. And now that you know how to make buttery smooth curves, make sure you check out the next AE Genius lesson where you'll learn how to animate even faster. Jeez.